We're just 33 days away from the election, so we're going to continue talking about some races here in Monroe County. Now, specifically here in the Keys, one of our most important boards is the Mosquito Control Board. Before we go today, I'm going to talk with one of your Republican candidates for Mosquito Control Board in District 3. Stephen, thank you for being back on the show this morning. Thank you, Jenna. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, it's wonderful having you here. And Stephen, let's talk first about your opponent. Now, he's actually been on the Mosquito Control Board for 16 years. So obviously, for you to be running, you believe that there needs to be a change. Well, I do. You know, I believe that uh, 16 years is a long time. I, I feel like that I can offer a new approach, new ideas. Uh, you sometimes, uh, you get complacent. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, you know, they say that politicians are a lot like diapers. They have one thing in common. They both need to be changed for the same reason. Uh, and I feel the same way. I, I feel like that it's time for a change. I feel like I can bring a lot to the board. I do have uh, a college degree. I have a master's in business. I've worked for four Fortune 100 companies. All of these things that in my background dealing with budgets and all, I believe those are all issues that, that can be uh, can make an impact on the board, and that's all I want to do is try to make an impact uh, for the citizens of Monroe County. Okay. Well, let's talk about the two specific areas that you would specifically like to attack if you were elected to the board. Well, I think one thing that we've always got to keep in mind is that we've got to make sure that our citizens, our children, our tourists are all uh, safe, uh, free from uh, any of the diseases that can occur from mosquitoes. We've constantly got to be uh, on top of that. And that's one thing that I definitely would want to continue. And uh, another thing is the budgets. Uh, I, I think that uh, we've got to constantly look at that budget and get those budgets under control. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a recent increase, a 6.9% increase in the budget. What do you think you would have done in that position, Stephen? Uh, well, I certainly would have voted against it. Uh, I'm a true conservative, physical conservative. And uh, one of those things is keeping our taxes in line. I do not believe that there was any need for uh, our homeowners in the county of Monroe to be paying more taxes, and they will next year. Starting October 1st, every homeowner will be paying 7% 7 more for their mosquito control budget. Uh, I don't believe that was necessary. And uh, I would urge uh, anytime all of the boards and that are government type boards like this to to watch what they're doing this is certainly not a time when people are losing their homes and having these financial decisions that they're making in their home jobs being lost to to put this added burden on the uh, the, the residents of Monroe and even if somebody rents uh, just because they rent it still affects them too we st the the people who own those homes that rent they are going to have to go up on their rent because they're going up on their taxes. Mm -hmm. It is passed along no matter if you're the homeowner or if you're a tenant of that homeowner. Mm -hmm. the, it, it affects everyone. Okay. So what do you think should have been cut instead of what was cut, Stephen? Well, several issues were brought up. Uh, there's been several things brought up that could have been cut. Uh, I'm not saying that uh, which one I would choose, but the, some of the things that were brought up at the board meetings, which I've been going to for the past year, um, was a contingency fund for the uh, employees should they leave. There's money set aside for their built-up vacation pay and sick leave that they're paid when they leave. Uh, that was certainly one issue. They are currently, the Mosquito Board puts aside the total amount, if everyone were to walk out tomorrow, mm -hmm. they have $750,000 put aside so that they could pay every employee. Well, it's just unrealistic to think that every employee would have walk out tomorrow. Uh, if uh, the most that I think has ever been expended is around 100 to 125,000 in one year. So I believe that amount would have been fine to have just taken out maybe 300,000, 350, 400,000 out of that contingency budget, you still would have had plenty for uh, a large number of employees leaving and been protected, and you would not have needed this increase. But that's one, that's one of the ways is right, one of the ways there that they could have cut. Mm -hmm. And Stephen, if people want more information about you or they want to contact you, they can check out your email address, Absolutely. which is located on the screen, also your website. That's correct. And the number, is that the number that they can reach you at? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Feel free to give me a call. I'd be glad to talk to anyone, answer any questions. Okay. Well, 
I wish you nothing but the best during this next month, right? It's going to be a busy one. <laughs> it is going to be a busy one. Thank you for being on the show, Thank Stephen. you, Jenna. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in this morning. I invite you to join me again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and again at 8.30 a.m. Take care and have a great rest of your day.